Hey, it's Ranger Russ. You notice I am not in the Nature Center for this episode. We are on the Rocky Shore. Before we start talking about the Rocky Shore, I want to remind everybody about social distancing, washing your hands, don't touch your face. And another thing, I think people should really look out for one another. We're all in this together. We can help each other out. So I ask you, check on your neighbors. If you have extra supplies, there are people that need those supplies, so please share them and we can get through this. Another reminder is that the parking lot, the campground parking lot here at Hammond Acid is closed. That's to increase social distancing, so you'll have to use other parking lots. Instead of the campground lot, you can park at West Beach, Middle Beach, East Beach, Meg's Beach, you can park all over the place. You can still access our bike path from any one of those locations. So, we're on the rocky shore. This morning we talked about a green crab. And green crabs are one of the animals that live on a rocky shore. Now a rocky shore, it's a type of a habitat. It's, it's an environment that animals like to live in. And the rocky shore habitat is very different from many other habitats. If you look along here, we have a rock line. You see the line where there's shells up above and rocks below. That's the beginning of the rocky shore. If you look out into the water, you can see the far rock out there that's just showing. At extreme low tides, you can walk almost to that rock. So this is the rocky shore habitat, okay? This ecosystem between the rock out there and these rocks over here, this is where we, what we call the rocky shore, which is an intertidal zone. So there's your first vocab word for this uh, program. This is an intertidal zone. It means it's between the high tide line, which are those rocks, and the low tide line, which is out by that rock. This is an intertidal between tides zone. Right now, I'm standing where water will be at high tide. So full high tide, we're going to have rock, uh, water covering all of these rocks. At low tides, the water, I'll be able to walk out to those rocks right there. And extreme low tides, depending on the time of the year and the phase of the moon, the water will be even further away. So this habitat, the reason it's so different from others is the animals that live here have to be able to survive both out on land, in the air, right now, and underwater as the tide comes in. In order to do that, there are some special adaptations. So there's another good vocab word, adaptation. An adaptation is a physical or behavioral change that an animal uses to be able to survive in a particular place. So a physical change might be we have thumbs. That physical adaptation allows us to use tools better than most animals. We have fine manipulation. A behavioral adaptation would be me putting my coat on when it gets cold. I don't have a layer of uh, fat or fur that's going to keep me warm, so I need to put a coat on. An animal like the green crab, which is ectothermic, would move. If it gets really cold, it could move into the sun. If it gets really warm, it will move into the shade. And that's a behavioral adaptation. So some of the adaptations that the animals need, most of the animals that live here are going to have a hard shell. That hard shell does a few things. It protects them from predators, but also it keeps them from getting dried out. When the sun comes out on a hot summer day, you can imagine it's really easy for a soft fleshy fish or, or other sea creature to get dried out if it's on land. So that shell helps keep them from getting dried out. You can see the looks like the tide is coming in. It's getting higher and higher. We're just going to roll it over, roll over one of these rocks. Okay, we have, you remember we did the show about periwinkles. Here are some periwinkles. Right here, there's a bunch more. Those are lots of periwinkles. And we're looking to see if we can find any Asian shore crabs. Because this is the habitat where you not only find the green crab, but you find the Asian shore crabs. That rock is too sunk in. 
All right. So some of the other adaptations, we had set a hard shell. Another good adaptation to live out here on the rocky shore is a way to hang on to the rocks. If you think of it this way, each time the tide comes in, these little waves to us are massive tidal waves to a small creature that's living on the rocky shore. So they want to be able to hold on and keep those waves from pushing them or when the tide is going out to keep the waves from, from pulling them out because there are larger predators out there that are waiting for anything that gets moved around by the tides. The snails that we talked about, they have a suction cup. That allows them to stay stuck to the rocks. Sometimes we find blue mussels, and we'll talk about blue mussels in another episode, but they have bissel threads, which allows them to attach to the rocks. And the crabs, they don't use their claws to hold on to their ro rocks. They use their legs. They have very pointy legs, and they can grab onto the rocks, so they can hold on to the rocks. And then you've got seaweed, which is able to grow on the rocks. But that's three different animals, the snail, the mussel, and the crab, that have three different adaptations to do the same thing. You have a suction cup, legs, or abyssal thread. They're all made to keep them attached to the rocks so the tide doesn't pull and push them around. Okay? Now... If you look out here, this large rock right there, that's a glacial erratic that was left by the glacier. But this rocky shore is all created by a glacier. We're going to do a program on that too. So this is a good time to remind you. If you want to see any of our past episodes, you can go to megspointnaturecenter.org, go to the uh, virtual learning center, and you'll get to see all of the past videos. Now I see some people are asking some questions, so I'll see if I can answer them as I go. Do land snails live in water? Typically, no. Land snails are going to be completely terrestrial or on land. Uh, they do need to keep moist, but they're very different from the snails that live in the water. Okay, so you've got two different types of snails um, that, are, that are living on depending on where they're living. All right, you can see our, there's these little snails are starting to get hit by the water. Let's turn over another rock and see if we can find one of the Asian shore crabs. When it gets later into spring, you'd go out here and every rock you turn over, you'll see, you know, five or so of these crabs, they just take off. There we go. Okay. So this is a little Asian shore crab. I'm not sure how well you can see this little guy. Um, but the Asian shore crab, and it is missing lots of legs and claws. It only has three legs and one claw. Okay, so I, we've talked about the fact that it can regrow those legs and claws, and this is an invasive species. Um, so something is probably uh, tried to eat it, or it was fighting for territory. But this is where they live, or under the rocks. Okay, do we have any other questions? If you guys have any questions, send them by any time. I'll keep an eye out and see if I can answer them as I go. It is a beautiful day here at Hammonasset. You can see why I like working here so much. We've got the waves crashing on the shore. There's a little bit of a breeze, but it is absolutely beautiful here today. Now, the seaweed that grows on here, the snails, remember we did the show on periwinkles, they're eating all of the seaweed that would grow on these rocks. This green, all of this green seaweed, this is new because the periwinkle population has dropped off a bit. So now we're getting a little more growth on these rocks. Years ago, you wouldn't see any green on these rocks. They would just be bare gray or black rocks. The gray or black color is actually a blue-green algae that the snails don't eat. Um, and it will grow, and you can see the tide line on that rock out there. That's blue-green algae that causes the line on the rock. This other algae, this is the, these are the algaes that the snails do like to eat. All right, let's move along here a little bit and see if we can find anything else. Typically, we don't see green crabs here anymore. We talked about the green crabs, and this is their habitat. But unfortunately, the Asian shore crabs 
have pretty much driven the green crabs out of this habitat. So we do not find green crabs very often anymore on our rocky shore. Occasionally we will find one, which is really cool, but not very often. Oh, you can see those little things that look like bugs right there flipping around. These are isopods, okay? Isopods and amphipods, uh, you can find them actually in your backyard. If you roll over a log or something, um, the sow bugs or pill bugs, those are amphipods. I may have just reversed that. I always reverse those two, amphipod and isopod. We're gonna, we will put that on our virtual learning center, the difference between isopods and amphipods. Um, the main thing is how they lay. When you pick them up and hold them in your hand, one of them lays on their back or their belly, and the other one always lays on its side. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, sow bugs and pill bugs are in that group. All right, do we have any questions going by? We have, what's the temperature of the water now? How wide of a range does the temperature get? So the sound, day to day, the temperature doesn't change very much, but winter to summer, you'll get a pretty drastic difference. Um, so right now, wow, it's actually not as cold as I thought it was, would be. I'm gonna guess that this is somewhere in the 50s right now, uh, in the high 50s. In the winter, in the middle of the winter, it can get down to, you know, into the 40s, and then the summer it'll get up into the 60s. So, uh, but again, day to day, it's not gonna change that drastically from day to day. The ocean is a big body of water and it takes a lot to change the temperature of the ocean. All right. So I'm gonna remind everybody again, uh, the parking lot up at the campground here at Hammonasset is closed right now. And that's just to increase social distancing. So don't think that we're, you know, anything has happened there. We're just trying to keep people separate, keep people, uh, give people alternate places to park. You can still access all of that. You can access it from West Beach uh, and get right on the same trail. The Greenway parking lot out on Route 1 is also a great place you can hop on there. I've seen that getting a bit crowded though. So if you pull up to a parking lot, see a whole lot of cars, maybe just, just keep driving through the park until you find a place that's not quite as crowded. Uh, keeping that social distance is very important um, to knocking down the spread of this virus. So, I hope you're all enjoying this. Please let me know what types of things you wanna learn about. We're gonna keep this going as long as we are doing social distancing and we're not able to open the Nature Center, we're gonna have these programs. We've got some really special ones coming up Things like Native American stories, maybe we'll do a, uh, a nature book reading, things like that. So let me know if you have any ideas, if there's something you really wanna see, we can make a program out of it. It may not be a really long program, but we can still, we can give you something, okay? So you can put those in the comments, you can send us a message on Facebook, uh, you can send a message through our website. All of those are great methods. I also wanna thank everybody who's been sending uh, pictures in for the website. We're trying to get them up there, um, which is pretty cool. I just touched my face, which you should not do. Um, keep those pictures coming, keep your comments coming. Go to megspointnaturecenter.org, virtual learning center, and you'll get lots more of all of these videos that we're doing. Keep on liking them and following and let your friends know and I will see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock. We'll be doing a live animal 11 o'clock. And then again, tomorrow at two, we will be outside in the environment somewhere. So thank you all for watching.